Formula One is a rapidly growing sport, and one of the fastest growing markets is in the USA. In 2021, the number of people who tuned into at least one Grand Prix increased by 53% in that country alone. So why is F1 getting so popular in the USA? Let's have a look. My name's Andy, and this is Behind the Drive. My biggest audience on YouTube is from the USA. Almost 25% of you who watched in the last month are based in the States. So it's clear that there's a huge group of people becoming very interested in Formula 1, to the extent that you're willing to tune into me chatting about it online. So the question is, why is this the case? And the easy but potentially wrong answer is Netflix. Drive to Survive The introduction of Drive to Survive was great for Formula 1. Traditionally, F1 is a complex sport, with so many different facets from tyre compounds to DRS to porpoising. For a new fan, it's very difficult to get to grips with these concepts, let alone getting to know the drivers and teams. As a result, there's traditionally been a high barrier to entry in terms of knowledge to get to know F1. Drive to Survive has offered something completely different, a highly dramatic story that follows several narratives over the course of the season. Understandably, there are some overdramatic events, with criticisms of the series including their flagrant use of team and driver radio messages playing over footage of a completely different race. But on the whole, it's brought a character to the drivers in the sport who are usually hidden behind their crash helmets. As a result, there are stories and drivers for the viewers to get behind, and this is exactly what it has achieved. So, Drive to Survive has offered an opportunity to look behind the curtain at the sport, or at least give the illusion of looking behind the curtain. Interviews with team bosses, journalists, and the drivers themselves add to the story, and this has created a chance for fans to get to know the drivers and teams in a way that they were rarely able to before, and this is brilliant for the sport and for the drivers. It must be said at this point, though, that the introduction of Drive to Survive has coincided with another shift, which is the huge increase in popularity of the drivers on their social media profiles. Drivers such as Lando Norris have been leading a generation that is streaming live on Twitch and posting more often to more people. Perhaps it was even the pandemic that propelled the appeal and intrigue of these drivers with the so-called Twitch quartets leading the way in the virtual Grand Prix series in replacement of the actual races. So, the Netflix series has undoubtedly created a brilliant opportunity to bring new fans into the sport, and many attribute the success of the series to the increase in viewership from the USA. However, in March of this year, the series didn't actually hit the top 10 in the US Netflix chart in the opening weekend, so this suggests that the sport and series still hasn't perhaps got the same appeal as it does in Europe. What's driving the increase in viewership? I mentioned that the Drive to Survive viewership in the USA didn't get into the Netflix top 10 in that country. However, the viewers of the races themselves in the States is on the rise. This year, it's been reported that the races have averaged over a million viewers each, which is significantly higher than even last year when it was closer to 900,000. This shows that fundamentally, the competitive nature of last season increased the appeal of the sport by a significant margin. It'll be interesting to see if these figures stay for the rest of the year, considering the title is wrapped up already. To compare these viewing figures with IndyCar, the most popular open-wheeled racing series in the USA, those races have seen just over 1.3 million viewers tuning in per race this year, so there's clearly more people interested in that series at this point in time. It's worth mentioning here though that F1 races tend to be Eurocentric, which means the races are at unsociable times for US fans. This is clearly something that isn't an issue for IndyCar given all their races take place in the USA. For me then, the increase in viewership is actually attributed to other factors. The first and main reason for this is just how competitive Formula 1 was in 2021. For the first time in years, there was a championship battle that went right down to the wire, and it was a real story of two drivers from different generations going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, with Hamilton and Verstappen emulating Schumacher and Alonso. It was gripping to watch all season long, which is clearly the main reason for the increase in popularity, but there's also another element which is glaringly obvious. It's now been five years since Liberty Media bought Formula One, and since then it's been transformed. Soon after the acquisition, the organisation released their strategy for growing the sport. This included six strategic pillars, which were increasing the competitiveness of the racing, increasing the spectacle of the races themselves and engagement with the fans, increase performance for shareholders, deliver sustainable operations, create new relationships with partners and empower the F1 workforce. Looking at these pillars, it's clear that buying F1 was an investment. 
There were goals to increase the value of the sport, but within that there were many elements that would improve the racing and increase fan engagement. Within the fan engagement pillar, there were goals that we can see have been implemented in the years since the takeover. They had a goal to increase the spectacle of F1, and since that time, we've had many new races join the grid, we've seen changes in the weekend structure with the trial of sprint races, and the races themselves seem to be bigger and bigger. This year, it feels like we've seen record audiences across the majority of race weekends. Another goal in this pillar was to increase the content creation, and since 2017, the F1 YouTube channel has gone from under 1 million subscribers to now 8.3 million. It's become one of the fastest growing sporting channels with content from race highlights to driver insights and radio highlights as well. It's been brilliant for the sport and it's clear the goal set in 2017 has been achieved and this isn't going to slow down anytime soon. A third goal within the engagement pillar was to make Formula 1 a part of popular culture and again I believe this has been achieved. As I mentioned earlier, the drivers are massively involved in popular culture, and while I, and probably you, are very much in the F1 bubble on social media, it feels like the attention on every race weekend is reaching new fans. Fundamentally, the goal of Liberty Media is to have eyeballs on the racing, and on the sport more generally, and they've been awesome at achieving this, which I suppose is the minimum you'd expect from a media company. Along with this strategy, F1 had intentions of breaking into new markets, and this is another area where I think the appeal for the US market has shone through. 3. US Grand Prix When Liberty Media took over the ownership of F1, there was one race in the States, at Cota. F1 returned to the USA at this track in 2012, after a five-year break following the farcical race at Indianapolis in 2005. It was a difficult return to the USA for F1, as the sport's reputation had been massively tarnished by the six-car race that happened a few years before. Come 2022 and 2023, this couldn't be more different. The 2022 season saw the inaugural Miami Grand Prix, which was a star-studded event with even former F1 drivers not being able to get into the paddock. Sure, there were gimmicks, the Pirelli American football helmets, and the amount of time it took even to get to the podium were just some that spring to mind, but on the whole, it was a successful race and very popular indeed. Next year, we'll see a third US race on the calendar with the introduction of a night race in Las Vegas. This race is already hotly anticipated by so many F1 fans. The idea of F1 cars racing down the Vegas Strip is very novel indeed. It's very different from the E-shaped circuit of the Caesars Palace Grand Prix hosted in a car park in the early 1980s, and I'm sure, much like Miami, it will be a spectacle once again. So as of next year, America will have three Grand Prix on the calendar, and this will clearly get more attention on the sport in the country. The three races are spread over the year, and so there will be more attention from the USA than ever before. For me, this combined with the great racing of 2021 is the main reason for the increase in popularity of F1 in the country, and that's been driven by the success of Liberty Media's new ownership of Formula 1. Other aspects have been introduced to potentially improve the racing into the future. The budget cap will have an impact over time, and these new regulations certainly have the potential to create closer racing in the future as the teams develop in this new aerodynamic era. Personally, I think we have many more years to come of Formula 1's growth, and it's one that's going to be fascinating to watch.